So, don't you just love it when you get a delivery of new art materials? I know all artists love to receive new materials, be it new brushes or pastel sticks. Well, I have just ordered, and here they are, some Girot or Girot pastels. I've known about these pastels for a long time, but I only used them on the last painting, on the Black Panther painting, the one I'm about to show you. And I love them. Oh, there's only one in here. Yeah, pastels, Girot. They're so creamy, so buttery smooth. I bought uh, a few of them to try out. I've known about these pastels for ages, but um, for one reason or other I, I never bought any and then I thought I'll, I'll actually buy some, give them a try. I can highly recommend Giralt or Giralt pastels. They are superb. There's some nice, nice colour there. Some nice skin tones because I'm going to do a portrait next and uh, I wanted some nice skin tones for that. But for this particular episode, episode 17, um, what I thought I'd do is show you, as promised, the Black Panther painting that I did. Now, all in all, I think it worked out pretty well in the end. The most interesting challenge of all came, believe it or not, from the background rather than the Black Panther itself. Uh, it was a lot more complex than I'd initially wanted to do because this painting really was for YouTube it was just all to demonstrate the painting of black fur so it took a little longer in the end but uh, but it worked out all the better for it so anyway um, enjoy the video um, here is the Black Panther and I hope you I hope you like it started off with a a rough line drawing just to get all the shapes and everything right. I always like to start the big cat pictures with uh, with the eyes. I like to, you know, window window to the soul and all that. I like to get a feel that there's something alive going on. Um, so I started with the with the eyes, Karen Dash pencil there, just to get some richer tone into the eye so that it could glow through some of the later colors that I'll skim over the top. Eyes always take many many layers just to get them right, to get that right degree of glassiness and glowing color. In this particular picture the eye to the right of your screen is getting more light than the eye on the left. So I'm, there's a bit of a highlight at the bottom of the eye I'm conscious of. But also, <clears throat> I want to get these colours nice and dark, dark and rich. Yeah, not just dark, but dark and rich. That's why those reds are going in. It's got to be deep, deep, strong colour um, and a nice bright highlight on that right eye there. Pastel mat allows me to put all these layers down. It's a beautiful surface, um, so I can continue to work these eyes throughout the painting. But at the moment, I just take them to about this level. Nice and, nice and colorful. I've got the glassy reflection in, and really that's as far as I need to go with the eye at this current time. Now it's time for me to concentrate on the black fur. I'm separating the face into areas of light and dark. That's what I'm doing first here. Notice that I'm using Stabilo Carbothello pencils and I'm just doing a very light layer. This is what I call the first pass and it just gives me an idea of the lights and the darks. So I've gone over the, I go over the entire cat um, just separating it into these areas. Areas where the light is falling and areas where it's shadowed. And that allows me to see it and visualize the finished article much more clearly. It 
it's a very important stage that we've reached just using three pencils from the Stabilo Carbothello brand. Very, very good for laying down a very fine layer. Taking things to this layer sparks my imagination and gets me visualizing how I want the final picture to look. And it was at this point that I started thinking about that background. My initial idea was that um, the most important thing about this painting was just the panther itself. So I just wanted a, a very diffuse, out of focus background. That was the initial plan. But it was a bit of a mistake. I really didn't think that through enough in my haste to do this video for YouTube. So I started here in the regular way of laying down a few light layers of pastel. I had in mind that there would be, you know, some tropical leaves in the background, but it would all be a little bit fuzzy and a little bit out of focus. Backgrounds are so important. They are the stage upon which the main subject must shine. Often, quite a simple background will work very well, but other times the background demands more complexity. And it's finding that balance, isn't it? Which one, which type of background would work best for this panther? I initially thought that a simpler background would suffice. And so I started to layer in a few more colors. You see, I wanted to get the pastel matte surface filled up, the tooth filled up just enough so that I could start some very soft blending because I wanted this background to look nicely out of focus. And that's what you can see me doing here. I'm just laying on some color on top of another color and then blending it with my finger. This is a technique that's served me well over the years on many, many paintings. When your background is slightly diffuse, slightly out of focus, and your subject is very sharply in focus, it gives us this tremendous sense of depth. And that was what my initial plan was for the Black Panther painting. It was about this stage of the painting that I began to hear one or two alarm bells going off in my head. I began to wonder whether I'd really spent enough time thinking about this background. You see, the style of the painting is going to be a squarish format and that leaves quite a bit of background to be filled. And as I was doing this, I began to realize that really it needs to be a little bit more complex. I'm not going to get away with just a bland, out of focus area. So I started to sharpen up a little bit, give hints, uh, a little bit more suggestions of leaves. And it was that at that point that I realized that it was time to take some time out, to sit back, and give this background the proper thought and consideration that it needs to put the Black Panther fur out of my mind and give this background my full attention. Perhaps some drastic changes needed to take place. So one of the most important things, I think, um, is never to be afraid of your work. If something's not right, you have to change it. No matter what, no matter how drastic you have to be, you have to change it. Because when a painting's finished, it's there forevermore. And if something's not right with it, it's going to bother you for, for, forever. Um, so a very, very important thing is to have no fear 
of your work. Sometimes they get so precious, don't they, our, our paintings? You do them and you, uh, and you become a little bit afraid of ruining it. That's a mistake. Never, never have fear of your work. Always know that you can make this better. And even if you made a mess, you can, re you can redo it. Now, the panther paintings did start to go wrong. And I think this is one of my uh, strengths, I would say, as an artist, is that I know immediately when things are not going or not meeting the standard. And I'll always stop at that point. Stop, take time out, reevaluate, think, probably overnight, uh, spend a lot of time thinking about it, think why it went wrong and come, come up with a plan on how to fix it. Now it could be that you've got to drastically um, change the painting. Now it's not that easy with a pastel painting to, to make drastic changes uh, unless you use what I use is cotton wool pads. Cotton wool pads and water uh, will get rid of a pas um, pastel on the surface. So you just get a cotton wool pad, dip it in water, squeeze it out, and let's just say for argument's sake, this bit of pastel, we're not happy with it, we want to get rid of it. You just simply rub it off and then give that half an hour to dry um, and you're back to the beginning. Um, you, you, you're, you're back to your first layer. So it's a really effective way. Now, it works perfectly on Claire Fontaine pastel mat. It's one of the reasons I use it. Um, the old Sennelier surface that I used to work on, that sort of sanded surface, which I liked, but it had a big flaw in that you could not put any droplet of water on it because it would remove the surface. But pastel mat is different. Pastel mat, you can, you can wash and uh, as long as you allow it to dry, you're good to go. And so that's exactly what I did. You can see there that I wiped off with the wet um, cotton pad. I wiped off the top. I felt it was too um, too busy all over it. This painting needed some area where the light was coming in. It needed that balance between um, busy complexity and open airy space. And once I'd figured that out, I was able to return my concentration to the main subject, the Black Panther. What you see me doing here is adding a second layer where I'm darkening the darks 
and lightening the lights. You notice that my pencil strokes are all in the right direction. They correspond to the direction of the fur. That's very important. I'm gaining a sense of how this animal's fur lies and how deep and how rich the colors should be and how light and how dark everything should be. And I'm working on all fronts towards that goal. Now it takes time, so I'm building up with these layers. And once I've got this, I'm getting close with this sense of lights and darks. Then I start to think more about colors and I start to tint in some of these beautiful blues that you get. Beautiful blues and turquoises and purpley magenta red shades that come into the lighter areas on the fur of a black animal. Detail, that never enters my head. That can come later. That's the icing on the cake. For now, think of light and dark and rich colour tone. The detail will get there. Patience. Have patience and don't rush into those details. That's the biggest mistake you could make here. And so I hold back. I continue to deepen the colours to make the darks darker and the colours richer and more beautiful and only when I feel that it's at the level that it should be do I consider introducing the first strokes of detail. The black here is giving me the tonal darkness that I need, but black is such a dead colour, isn't it? So over the top of that black, I like to skim on some of those purpley tones, just to give everything that velvety richness that I require. Colours, colours, beautiful colours. That's what I'm thinking about for this painting. Yes, it's black fur, but it's rich in colour. Blues on the edges there, between the light and the dark. Purples, purpley tones in the middle. And then still to come, some beautiful highlights. We want to make this panther look silky smooth, that's the plan. And so this formula is repeated, new layers of pastel are continued down through the chest and onto the paws. It's the same method, laying in the rich colours, darkening the darks, lightening the lights and getting everything ready for the stage when we can actually do some individual hairs here and there. You can see that I started to do a little bit of detail on the chest 
there already. It's not going to take too much. The realism in this particular work comes from observing the light and dark and the general flow and feel of that fur. If we get that right, then we're 90% there. The individual detail hairs, as I say, they're just icing on the cake. What you see me doing here is using a black square Conte pastel. Now this is a very, very deep black I find and the pastel, the Conte pastel black is very, very hard as well. So it's quite good for doing those little, little deep, dark marks. Now these are, these are breaks in the fur. The light is coming from sort of on the top and every now and then the fur is broken a little bit and these black marks indicate those shadows where the light doesn't quite reach inside the fur there. And that gives the fur that very subtle sense of three dimensionality on the surface. And correspondingly, you may notice some lighter strokes. They were done with a very pale blue Conti pastel, and they indicate the hairs that are standing slightly proud of the others and just catching that light. So you've got the very dark marks and the very light highlight hairs. And together, they create the impression of thick fur. Now it was time for me to pay attention to the lower half of the painting and I decided to have him on some rocks. I thought that would be um, an interesting contrast uh, rather than just a, a sort of dirty jungle floor with leaves. That was another consideration. But I decided to go with rocks and because it's a black panther, I thought I'd do white limestone rocks. I thought they would be a very nice type of rock to contrast white rocks with the Black Panther. Now I'm just making these rocks up com completely, um, inventing them as I go along. I wanted one slightly higher over on the left and obviously I've got to create a convincing realistic platform where the panther is, is lying so I've got to be careful with how I arrange these rocks. So here I am just loosely um, trying out where I want my lightest parts of the rocks to, to be and just sort of playing around with the shapes. This actually here right now is the first time I'd ever tried a Giralt pastel and uh, see the way they go on very very smoothly you see I I use pastels very lightly just a very very light stroke and yet they deposit a really nice layer of pastel that can be that can be blended almost immediately with on the first layer so I really like them
I gave myself complete artistic freedom at this stage in the painting. I'd not really decided before, as I said, what I was going to do at the bottom section of the painting, uh, but I really got into these rocks and I really enjoyed this part of the creative process. I do uh, work from photographs, don't get me wrong, but I much prefer when I've just got freedom just to invent things. And this was one of those occasions. Notice to the left of your screen, just under my hand there, I'd started to sketch in some leaves. I had this idea that it would be nice just to suggest a bit more of the jungle and sort of connect the jungle from the background to the foreground. Also, as I got sort of carried away with the um, rocks, I extended the painting. I decided to extend it an inch or so to the left, which meant that I had to um, redo the body of the panther. But that didn't matter. I just thought it gave it um, a better overall appearance. So no matter what it takes, whatever changes need to be made, I'm prepared to, to do them because at the end of the day, I want to have a painting that I can proudly sign and a painting that I will look at for a long time to come and won't leave me with any regrets. So how do I paint rocks like this from my imagination? Well, really, I'm drawing on a lifetime of experience of freehand drawing. And when you, when you practice freehand drawing, you get used to visualizing the three-dimensional shape of things. And rocks are really just lumps of matter in three-dimensional space. So all I'm doing is imagining where the light is coming from, imagining a shape in my mind, and then thinking where would the light strike that shape? And where would the shadow be formed? And between the light and the shadow, you can build up these geometric shapes. And that's really all there is to it. The rest is just dressing it up putting lichen on, bits of colour here and there. You notice me using the turquoise pastel just then. It's all just dressing on top of that three-dimensional space. If you can get that bit to look convincing, then it's plain sailing from there. And what I wanted to do was just build a platform upon which the panther would be lying and just have fun to make a nice design with the rocks just to finish off the bottom of this painting. It's also done by following the formula of doing big shapes to little shapes. You get the large general shape of the rock first and then you apply all these little attributes and colors but even in the little bits that you see me doing here I'm always bearing in mind where that light is coming from will this be a darker mark or a lighter mark or if it's a little protrusion maybe it needs a little shadow underneath and a little highlight on the top and if you stick within that general framework of where the light is coming from, you won't go far wrong. And finally, you reach the stage where it's time for those whiskers. Now whiskers on a big cat painting are really really important. It can it can make it look so amateurish if you do a big rough line of whiskers. The, the whiskers have to be very very fine. So here's some real-time footage 
of how I'm doing the whiskers on this painting. Notice I'm not using a white because the whiskers here are in the shadow. So I'm using that sort of maroon color and just, it's a very sharp pencil, that's another thing, and very lightly. Now this also works well because I've not used up completely the tooth of the paper when I was doing the deep rich colors of the fur. So I can easily do a line on top of it. If I'd caked on the pastel, it might be very difficult to put those whiskers on. Sometimes you run into problems there. So it's balancing everything. It's balancing your use of the tooth of the paper. I like to try and get things finished within the tooth of the paper so that there's still room for some fine lines, maybe detailed lines, or maybe, as we see here, the whiskers going in very slowly, very carefully. These whiskers are showcase elements. They're very important and I wouldn't want to rush them. I wouldn't want to do any of these thick ones or ones that are sort of bent or anything. I usually look at the point at which I'm going to start the whisker and then quickly glance down to where I'm going to end it and then very carefully and deliberately draw that whisker line. Another tip is I often sharpen the pencil to a chisel edge to do the whisker. Now if your pastel is too soft, your pastel pencil, then you might get a broken line. I find these Stabilo Carbothello pencils are excellent for the whiskers. Notice here that I've switched to a grey, a warm grey Stabilo Carbothello. And that's because whiskers have highlights, even when they're in the shadow. Some of those hairs will just be catching a little bit of light. And you have to be very, very selective and very, very careful. Just pick out the light. The danger is to make a double line. You know, you have to put your highlight line precisely over the line that you made first. It can be, it can be a tense moment putting those whiskers in. But like anything else with pastel painting, if it does go wrong, you can always rub it out and redo it. Here at this stage in the painting, I'm also glancing all over the place and looking for any areas that might just need a few little details, a few little highlights here and there. It's, those, it's often those last little touches here and there that can make a big difference to the overall impression of the painting. I usually have what's what I call a finishing day where I go over every square inch of the painting just looking everywhere making little changes little improvements until I feel that it's at the stage where I can't really make it any better
and we're not quite there yet there's still areas like edges that need improving they just need that little bit of finish to go on adjusting the color adjusting the brightness maybe and then finally I'm using a, a soft pastel stick there sharpened just to put in those final strokes it's only at this sort of stage that I think about those individual hairs but the edges are always important edges where the light is coming round it's got to it's got to be at just the right level to give a degree of realism that I'm looking for you could say that I'm a realist uh, artist or an artist who does realism but I don't know I, I, I don't sort of consider that I'm a hyper realist that I want everything to be hyper re hyper real I like it to just just be at a certain level where it still looks like it's been done by the hand of a person I still like to have that little stamp of creativity and um, artistic flair I'm not looking for truly photographic hyperrealism I'm, I'm looking for something something that's on the way to that but a little bit more beautiful perhaps it is art after all that we're trying to produce not to recreate exactly uh, everything we see with with no with no input from ourselves so what I'm trying to do is have a fine balance at that close point where I'm where it's looking pretty real but I still want I still want people to be able to to recognize that this is an Eric Wilson And it's amazing what a difference a few fine marks can make. Just those few hairs in the coat that are catching a bit of light. This is the stage where those marks really count. And they count because of what's underneath. Because I spent most of the time concentrating on the tones and the colours. Now, the marks mean something. The mistake would be to go for detail too early. So you save your best to the last. These final marks are what bring everything together. And hopefully leave you with a painting that you'll be proud to sign.
I really hope that you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Now what you've seen is actually a very heavily edited down version. I filmed the entire process from beginning to end, many hours of footage. Now, the reason I've done that um, is that I'd like to put that into a DVD. If you think this might be something that you would be interested in, then please leave a message for me in the comments below or send me an email at ericwilson1 at btinternet.com. I've also filmed the leopard portrait that I did last and um, the tiger in the long grass. So all of these could go into a major DVD uh, or DVD series perhaps called um, How to Paint the Big Cats in Pastel. So if you think that's something that might interest you, please let me know. It takes a very long time to edit these things together so it would be nice to gauge the level of interest. this particular episode I really hope you enjoyed it if you like this video please do like it uh, and consider subscribing that would be really really nice of you that would be much appreciated uh, and share the video why not share it with people because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who will be quite interested in how to do big cats in pastel like this um, yeah so that's it really for this episode. Time to uh, time to go. Time to go. You're joking, no, aren't you? No, I have to go. I mean, I mean these things do. Uh, Having a laugh. Can't talk forever. So. But how would you paint two lions on a rock? So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go. Call gonna yourself go. an artist. I'll, I'll uh, yeah, yeah. No. What's the best I'll, colour for I'll, the I'll sky, back. like? the space. Come on then, let's go and get some fish and chips. <laughs>